गुड मॉर्निंग एंड जय हिंद टू ऑल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस डायरेक्ट एंड इनडायरेक्ट सेमी कंडक्टर्स बट बिफोर गोइंग डिस्कशन आई एम आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस माई सेल्फ माई सेल्फ आर पी सिंह असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड कम्युनिकेशन इंजीनियरिंग सो इफ वी टॉक अबाउट द सेमी कंडक्टर देन सेमी कंडक्टर्स आर द मटेरियल्स हुज कंडक्टिविटीज आर इंटरमीडिएट बिटवीन मेटल्स एंड इंसुलेटर्स so if we talk about conductivity then conductivity is decided from the concentration of charge carriers if we take concentration of charge charge carriers on the x axis and if we roughly put the value and put 10 to the power 6 carriers per centimeter cube and here i am putting 10 to the power 21 carriers per centimeter cube then for the insulators we are having less than 10 to the power 6 free carriers free electrons per centimeter cube for the insulators if we are talking about metals then in fact if you are talking about the metals then it, it's going for the electrons for the metals we have more than 10 to the power 21 electrons per centimeter cube so it is for metals if we are talking about the semiconductor then for the semiconductor we have large range so the number of carrier concentration as well as conductivity of semiconductors can be varied starting from 10 to the power 6 per centimeter cube up to 10 to the power 21 centimeter cube per centimeter cube so there are so many ways by which conductivity of the semiconductors can be varied by changing temperature by providing some optical excitation either by adding some impurity content by the doping so uh, there are so many applications of semiconductors we can use semiconductors as conductors we can use semiconductors as insulators and if we are talking about the semiconductors then in predictable the column third compounds that is silicon and germanium these are most extensively used semiconductors and by using column third compound and column fifth compound we made some compound semiconductors like uh, uh, gallium arsenide indium phosphide and so many compound semiconductors both kind of semiconductors have their own applications so we can uh, categorize the semiconductors on the basis of their structure so either we are using elemental semiconductors that is silicon and germanium single element semiconductors and also we are having compound semiconductors like gallium arsenide gallium phosphide indium phosphide in elemental semiconductors in that band gap energy is found so these semiconductors are called as in that semiconductors these are called as diode semiconductors both are important uh, both the uh, both kind of semiconductors have their own application the elemental semiconductors are used in rectifiers transistors and ics and uh, in today we are using so many memories like ram rom hard disk in fact if we are talking about the ram that is random access memory which is either made by the latches either made by the transistors so latches are made from the transistors and these transistors are made from the elemental semiconductors either by silicon either by germanium so these are the applications of the elemental semiconductors these can be used as in rectifier can be used in transistors can also be used in ics and now come to the compound semiconductors these are basically indirect semiconductor uh, sorry direct semiconductors so compound semiconductors have their own properties in these kind of semiconductors we are getting light so this kind of semiconductors can be used in opto electronic devices opto electronic devices are basically the devices which can convert optical energy into electrical energy either convert electrical energy into optical either optical into electrical for example led light emitting diode in light emitting diode the input is electrical energy and the output is optical energy and also we are getting uh, so many other applications this 
kind of semiconductors are used in microwave devices these are used to make semiconductor lasers these are these are used in lie detectors so uh, both the semiconductors have their own applications so now uh, come to the basic property and that is a structure so when uh, uh, quantitative calculations are made so for the calculation we use energy band diagrams for the energy band diagram we take energies on vertical axis and the wave vector that is basically momentum it is taken at the uh, vertical axis so for the calculations allowed values of energy can be plotted versus the propagation constant k the band structure of gaas so now we can see the band structure energy band diagram so the band structure of gaas is shown in the diagram here the minima of conduction band this is the minima of conduction band that is the minimum value of conduction band and the maxima of valence band both are found at the same value of here the value of here the value of k is zero so momentum is same if any electron is lying in this band then then it will exactly at the same momentum value if a hole is lying in the valence band if this electron is making transition from conduction band to valence band for the recombination with the hole then in this recombination process we get the light energy this electron will lose energy then it comes from the conduction band to valence band and in this transition the loss of energy will be found in the form of light optical light so by the direct band gate semiconductors we are getting light energy as the output now come to the indirect band gate semiconductors for indirect band gate semiconductors if any electron is lying in the conduction band and a hole is lying in the valence band then you can see the maxima of valence band and minima of conduction band both are found at the different values of k it is found at k is equal to 0 and here we are having some value of k so both are found at the different values of momentum so if any electron want to make recombination with the hole which is already available in the valence band then this electron first have to transfer its momentum so momentum will be shifted momentum will be transferred and this electron comes at the transition energy level et after spending some time at this defect level it can next make next transition to the valence band and recombine with the hole in this process we are not getting we are not getting the optical light we are getting energy in the form of heat so now the difference is first first difference is in the direct band semiconductors direct band gap semiconductors the minima of conduction band and maxima of valence band is found at the different values of k and in indirect band gap semiconductors the minima of conduction band maxima of valence band both are found at different values of k for the transition if any carrier is making transition in direct band gap semiconductor then light is obtained as the output in indirect band gap semiconductors if any carrier is making transition from conduction band to valence band then first momentum will be transferred then from any defect level it comes to the valence band recombines with the hole and in this whole process we are getting we are getting energy in the form of heat instead of light so both have different application if we want some optical light as the output then we use direct band gap semiconductors uh, uh, as we are using in leds light emitting diode if we are not interested to get the light we are not using opto electronic devices then we use indirect band gap semiconductors like rectifiers and transistors or any other ICs. So we can show that an indirect transition involving a change in momentum requires a change of momentum shift for the electron. 
So, this is for the indirect band gap semiconductors. The same diagram which was shown before is plotted here with the example. So, it is an example of gallium arsenide that is compound semiconductor. Gallium arsenide is having direct band gap semiconductor. So, here we are getting maxima of valence band and minima of conduction band at the same value of k. Here the value of k is 0. This is the example of indirect band gap material that is silicon. This is plotted for the silicon. This is basically indirect band gap material, indirect semiconductor and this is for direct semiconductor, direct energy gap and it is for indirect energy gap. So, here if any electron is willing to uh, make some transition for the recombination process, then it can make transition, then it can make transition from conduction band to valence band and in this process it lose some energy in the form of light. The value of the energy associated with light will be exactly equal to E g. E g is the energy gap between conduction band and valence band. So, for the indirect semiconductors, if any electron which is residing in conduction band, if it, it is willing to make some transition, it goes for a recombination, then first momentum will be transferred. First, it, it have to come any defect level, any transition level. After transfer of momentum, it can make transition to valence band and in this whole process, in the process of transition from ET to valence band, the energy is lost in the form of heat. So, this is the example of silicon and gallium arsenide. It is a direct band gap material, it is a indirect band gap material. So, it is already shown that for compound semiconductors, for compound semiconductors, we use some compound from third column and some compound from fifth column. By combining third and fifth column element, we are making compound semiconductors like gallium arsenide, gallium phosphide, aluminum arsenide and so on. When we are making some compound semiconductors, then for the design criteria, we have to take care, take care about the composition. <coughs> for example, this diagram is plotted for ALGAAS, aluminum, gallium and arsenide. This is basically ternary compound. There are three atoms are taken in it. So, this plot is for gallium arsenide. This is for aluminum arsenide. For gallium arsenide, we are getting diode band gap semiconductor because here the conduction band minima and valence band maxima, it is found at the same value of k. For aluminum arsenide, the maxima of conduction band and minima of valence band is found at the different values of k. This is the central valley and this is the satellite valley. In degenerate semiconductors, we are getting so many conduction bands. The main conduction band, which is at the lowest separation from the valence band maxima, it is called as central valley and others are known as set, uh, satellite valley. So, this is satellite valley and this is the central valley. So, this is diode band gap material because the central valley and this maxima of valence band is found at the same value of k. Here, minima of conduction band, maxima of valence band is found at the different value of k. So, this is known as indirect band gap semiconductors. So, what to be uh, uh, taken under consideration that if we are making some compound semiconductors that is ternary alloy. Here, the formula is written as Al Ax Ga, GA 1 minus x into As. S is basically compound, mixing of compound. If we are taking the value of x is 0, if we are taking x as 0, means no aluminum is added, then we are getting Ga As. For x is equal to 0, 
this ternary compound is gallium arsenide. With gallium arsenide, it is red band gap semiconductor. If we are taking the value of x is 1, so putting 1, this is Al, and if we are putting 1 here, 1 minus 1 is 0, then it is AlAs. So, this is direct band gap semiconductor and this is indirect band gap material. So, this is just a variation from 0 to 1. The com uh, complete property is changed. If we are putting x is 0, then it is direct band gap material. If we are taking the value of x is 1, then it is an indirect band gap material. Then what is the limiting point? So, by experiment it is found that if <coughs> if value of x is less than 0.38 means if we are adding aluminum less than 38 percent then it will be direct, direct band gap material. If x will be taken more than 0 0.38 0, more than 0 0.38 then it will be indirect material like ALAS. Similarly, another compound semiconductor that is GAASP, gallium arsenide and the addition of phosphorus, gallium arsenide with phosphorus. It is very similar to ALGAAS. The main thing is, the important thing is, if x is less than 0 0.45, then it is direct band gap material, it is a direct semiconductor and can be used to make LEDs, can be used to make semiconductor lasers, can be used to make photodiodes. If the value of x is greater than 0 0.45, then it will be indirect band gap material. So, when we are going to design LEDs, when we are going to design semiconductor laser and we are using compound semiconductor for these applications, then we have to take care about the composition. If we are using GAASP, then X should be less than 0 0.45. And with the varying uh, and with the variation in the value of X, the color of the LED will be also varied. If X is less than 0 0.45, LED can be made some red LED will be made if x is taken 0 0.45, it, if the value of x is less than 0 0.5, you can say 0 0.35, then the color of LED is different. So, if we are making uh, some optoelectronic devices and we are using compound semiconductors, then this thing should be taken care that what amount of aluminum or what amount of phosphorus, phosphorus is taking. So, this is the effect of uh, ternary and other uh, alloy composition when we are making compound semiconductors. So, uh, we have discussed about diet and in indirect semiconductor materials. So, diet semiconductor materials are used to make some optoelectronic devices. When we are making optoelectronic devices, we are making, we are using compound semiconductors. For preparation of compound semiconductors, composition is very important. So, we have to take care about it. So, now the next question is that, it is a very interesting question. Then, when we are plotting these energy band diagrams. So, instead of using straight line, instead of using another shape, we have used parabola, parabolic shape. If we have plotted E k diagram, that is energy is taken on y axis, and momentum is taken on the x axis, then the conics which is obtained is parabola. Why it is parabolic? Why the shape of this graph is parabola? So, to study uh, this shape of energy band diagram and to study other more concepts, we have to study, we have to consider the concept of effective mass. So, if a electron is moving in the vacuum or free space, then it is a free to move. But the same electron if if is moving in crystal are not completely free. When electron is moving through the crystal, it interacts with the periodic potential of the lattice. 
and if it if it interacts with the periodic potential of the lattice then the value of mass will be altered so we, we must use different values of particle mass the calculation of effective mass must be taken into account the shape of energy band in the three dimensional k space taking appropriate average over the various energy bands so now we are going to consider the value of effective mass we are going to study effective mass so if we are interested to derivate the expression for effective mass so we have to consider wave particle duality according to wave particle duality when any micro any micro particle is moving through the crystal either in space then this particle can behave as particle as well as it can behave as wave so the momentum of electron momentum of an electron momentum of an electron can be written as if momentum is denoted by p then it can be written as m into v where m is the mass of the electron and v is the velocity with, uh, with which it is moving by the wave particle duality if the same electron which is uh, considered as particle if it is considered as wave then by the de broglie hypothesis we can write the momentum as h by lambda so here we are using wave particle duality so by the concept of wave particle duality we have written momentum as h by lambda now dividing numerator and denominator by 2 pi h by 2 pi divided by lambda upon 2 pi h by 2 pi can be written as h cross or h naught and we know that the wave vector the wave vector k can be written as 2 pi by lambda since wave vector is written as 2 pi by lambda so lambda upon 2 pi can be written as 1 upon k so momentum can be obtained as if electron is behaving as wave then momentum can be written as h naught k this is equation 1 this is equation 1 now the energy kinetic energy associated with this electron energy associated energy associated with this electron with the micro particle or electron you can write electron can be written as if energy is denoted by e then this kinetic energy if it is kinetic energy because the electron is moving so we are considering here kinetic energy the kinetic energy can be written as half m v square if we are dividing numerator and denominator by m then this can be written as m square v square i am writing here mv square by m and this mv can be written as momentum p square by 2m now in equation 1 previously we have obtained value of p as h naught k then by equation 1 by equation 1 we can write momentum the value of mv value of p as h naught k so h naught h square k square by m p is taken as h naught k so here p square by m h naught square k square by m e is equal to half 
h naught square k square by m. This m is basically effective mass. This m is basically effective mass. So, we can write E is equal to, in fact, h naught is constant. I am writing here h naught square. 2 is constant and in a particular material, the effective mass is also constant. So, this is the constant quantity and this is the momentum k square wave vector. So, we are getting the expression between energy and wave vector, in fact, energy and momentum like this. We have renoted momentum as h naught k, h naught is constant, k is the wave vector, it is a variable factor because uh, k, k is 2 pi by lambda and lambda is varying. So, the variable factor is k. So, here we are, we are getting a relation between E and k and E is taken at y axis, k is taken at x axis and this is square and other quantities are constant. So, this is basically the equation y is equal to cx square which is a poet parabola. Since these calculations are made for the electrons and electrons are found in conduction band and if we draw the plot according th to this equation and take k on the x axis and e on the y axis. So, we are getting a port parabola with the ha having some values of constant. So, with the constant we are having a port parabola. For the holes, same calculation can be made, but polarity is different. So, because of different polarity for the holes, we are getting negative effective mass. So, valence band is basically downward parabola. Since the relationship between E k is showing parabolic conic, so the plot between E and k is found as parabola. Now, I am writing it equation number this is question number 2. So, now this is the plot between E and K. Now, I am uh, moving ahead. So, this is the expression we have derivated on previous page. This was basically equation number 2. This was equation number 2. So, in this equation, we are making differentiation. Now, differentiation, differentiating with respect to k. Since k is the variable parameter, so we are differentiating this equation with respect to k. So, first derivative d e by d k will be equal to, in this expression, h naught square is constant, 2 m is constant, it is basically effective mass, that is why I, am, I, I have denoted m star, something different from m, m uh, because m is denoted for the rest mass, so I am for effective mass, I am using m star, a notation and k is the variable quantity. Then d by d k of k square, we know that d by d x of x square will be 2 x. So, now, h naught square upon 2 m into 2 into k. 2 is cancelled by 2 and we are getting d by d k like this. Now, again differentiating this expression with respect to k, we will get d 2 e by d k 2, it is a second derivative. h naught square by m is constant. So, now we had to differentiate k with respect to k. So, differentiation of k with respect to k will be 1. So, d 2 by d k 2 will be obtained as h naught square upon m. Either we can write 
effective mass will be equal to h naught square divided by d 2 e upon d k 2. Effective mass will be equal to h naught square by d 2 e upon d k 2. It is a second derivative of the plot between e and k. So, it is a second derivative. So, the effective mass the effective mass will be inversely proportional to second derivative which is basically uh, curvature of the plot. So, effective mass is inversely proportional to the curvature of the E k diagram. So, where the curvature is higher, effective mass is lower, where the curvature is higher, effective mass will be lower, In inverse relation will be obtained. So, this is the relation we are going to derivate. So, by the equation 1, sorry, by the equation 2, it is concluded that the conics, the plot between E and K will be parabolic. It is a basically a point parabola for the electron, for the yellow holes means for the valence vein will be downward parabola. Now, the second outcome is the curvature of the band determines the electron effective mass. If the curvature is higher, effective mass is lower. If the curvature is lower, effective mass is higher. Inverse relation is obtained. So, previously we have plotted a diagram for the gallium arsenide. This diagram for the gallium arsenide. It is a direct band gap material. It is a direct band gap material. So, you can see that here the curvature is higher. So, here the curvature is higher and we are having some value of effective mass. Here the curvature is lower, we are having the value of effective mass m2. Then, since the since curvature is higher, so m1 will be less than m2. Value of m1 will be higher or lower it will be decided by the curvature. So, now take another example. It is shown here. This energy band diagram is plotted for gallium arsenide, n type gallium arsenide. So, for the n type gallium arsenide, the conduction band is plotted here, valence, uh, sorry, conduction band is plotted here, valence band is plotted here. It is a conduction band, it is a valence band. The separation between con conduction and valence band that is Eg is 1.43 for the gallium arsenide. Now, talk about the effective mass. You can see from the diagram that here the, here the effective mass is 0 0.68. Value of effective mass is 0 0.68. Here the value of effective mass is 1.2. Curvature is higher, value of, value of effective mass is lower. Curvature is lower, value of effective mass is higher. So, in fact, we have derivated the effective mass will be inversely proportional to curvature of this conics d2e by dk2. Second derivative. First derivative shows the tangent and second derivative shows, uh, shows the curvature. So, these are the discussions for the uh, direct and indirect band gap semiconductors. And uh, now, again I am concluding this that both have their own applications. The elemental semiconductors, these are basically indirect band gap. Indirect semiconductors or indirect band gap semiconductors. These are used in rectifiers. You know that rectifiers are uh, the devices which is used to uh, convert AC into DC. This can also be used in transistors. Transistors are uh, can also be used as a switch 
can also be used for the process for amplification. Amplification means to raise the strength of the signal. So, these uh, semiconductors and indirect semiconductors can also be used in transistors. This can also be used in ICs, VLSI or LSI or any application where transistor can be used. And the compound semiconductors are used in optoelectronic devices. For light detectors, we use cadmium uh, cellulite CDSE. Nuclear radiation detectors can also be used and uh, by the use of compound semiconductors, we can uh, make some other optoelectronic devices. So, that is all for today's lecture and thank you for the joining the class. Thank you. Jai Hind.